So, welcome again, everyone. In this class, we are going to be looking at budgetary control. In previous class, we've been able to look at the concept of budgeting. Look at the meaning. We look at the types. We look at the objectives. Then we look at different concepts and terminologies in budgeting. But this time around, we'll be looking at the concept and the study on budgetary control. So once again, everyone, you are welcome to today's class. This is Learn City, the city where learning is made accessible and in a quality manner for you. Budgetary control. What's the meaning of budgetary control? Budgetary control is the whole system of control established in organization to plan the activities of the organization and take steps to achieve the set plans. Budgetary control is actually the amalgamation or the coalition of two separate words, budget in a budgetary way and control. Don't forget I said one of those key elements in budget is planning. But how do we achieve this plan? How do we take steps to actually accomplish our projections, our plans? This gives us what we call a budgetary control. The process of setting a control mechanism on the planning approach that will be implemented in the budget. So, we say budgetary control is the whole system that is established, that is instituted, that is set in place to actually plan, number one, budget, to plan. Not only to plan, we put the control measures and that is the second part to take step in achieving the plans. So, that is the meaning of budgetary control. is the whole system of control established in an organization to plan, one, the activities of the organization, two, to take steps to achieve the set plans. So, that is everything behind the definition of budgetary control. But, what are the objectives? What are the reasons for budgetary control? What are the purpose while we set control measures on our budget? Number one, to aid planning. Number two, to coordinate activities and to communicate and most especially to institute a control mayor. Quickly, before rounding up this class, we'll be looking at the different budgetary control techniques. In budgetary control, there have been different advent or evolution of different techniques to ensure there is control on the budgeting system of every organization. So we'll be looking at different techniques in this regard. Number one of these techniques is what we refer to as the ZBB, what we call the zero-based budgeting techniques. ZBB techniques. Now, mainly, mostly this is actually introduced in the public sector. It's one of the budgetary control systems used in the public sector, though not yet popularly or widely adopted, as most public sectors still use an incremental budgeting approach. But a zero-based budgeting is a formalized system of budgeting for the activities of an enterprise to be planned in such a way to assume that is taking place from a zero basis. Now listen, 
ZBB assumed that for each planning center or for each item, a cost structure is developed but is not dependent on previous history but is starting from a scratch. So it's a form of budgetary system that for every year or for every annual planning actually takes its decision from the scratch, from a zero base without building on previous budgetary system used or budget, budgeted amount for the item. So zero-based budgeting is a budgeting that actually takes place and assumes a zero or a null NULL base for every item that is going to be budgeted for. So now what are the advantages of implementing a zero-based budget? Number one, it is possible to identify and remove inefficient or obsolete operation. Now, don't forget when we are defining ZBB, I said that ZBB is such that builds is budgeting or budgetary system from the scratch, from a zero level. So, in such case, any form of obsolete operation that is not useful going forward, you know, will actually be invariably removed. So it allows to identify inefficient, inoperative, or inactive centers or items when making a budgetary plan. Number two, it avoids wasteful expenditure. So, in zero-based budgeting, all budgeting are actually made based on their level of importance. We don't presume or lay foundation on previous level of importance, no. Are they useful in this next operational stage that we are entering in? If they are not useful, that's going to cause a waste. They are removed. So, in this case, it's avoid wasteful expenditure. Another form of advantage of implementing a ZBB is that it allows a more efficient allocation of resources to activities and departments of the organization. So, it allows resources to be efficiently allocated within the organization. Resources don't forget we said it avoid waste. So it allows that every resources that is going to be allocated or allotted are actually allotted optimally. Waste cancelled. Inactiveness or inefficiency removed. Therefore, the remaining or the resources that are available will then be efficiently allocated. Quickly, before rounding up this section, what are the demerits or disadvantage of implementing ZBB, either in public sector or in private sector? Number one is that ZBB emphasizes short-term benefit to the detriment of long-term benefits. Now, don't forget I said, when we are mentioning about or talking about the advantages of ZBB, that Anything that is actually inoperative, that is inactive, that is inefficient for the next cycle of production or operation that we are engaging in, they are actually removed. Now, listen, there might be some items that in the present period, actually they are not important. They are not actually going to accrue any benefit, but in the long run, are you getting it? After a long 
period of operational process, they will actually bring in their own contribution. In ZBB, these are always removed or eliminated, as in the short run, they are actually not useful. So, one of the demerits of ZBB is that it emphasizes, it focuses, it predicates on short-term benefit as against or to the detriment of long-term benefit. Number two is that ZBB requires, ZBB requires management skills in decision analysis to construct decision packages. Now, in making in steps used in ZBB, I mean, the steps, the budgetary steps under zero-based budgeting, there's what we call a decision package. A decision package is one of those things that the management takes into consideration before allotting a specific amount of budget to every item or operational center. Now, in developing this decision package, there is a need for a very strong management skills. So, and in most organizations, these management skills are lacking or probably may not be possessed. Therefore, this will inhibit or affect the adequate implementation of ZPB. So, it requires and calls for a very strong managerial skills to be able to implement. Another disadvantage of ZBB is that there is difficulty in the ranking process. You know, one of those steps in ZBB, in zero-based budgeting, is that decision packages are ranked based on their level of importance or priority and are budgeted for in accordance to that ranking. So, there is at times sentiment, subjectiveness, or difficulty in this ranking. So, this will actually affect the implementation of a zero-based budgeting techniques. So, I want to believe you've been able to get something in this class, actually. So, don't forget to like this video, share with professional colleagues, Go to our YouTube channel, Learn City, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In the next series and class, we are going to be looking at another budgetary control techniques called incremental budgeting approach. So thank you everyone for today's class and God bless you.